intervene in each one's readiness in embracing the new. It's best if we first identify the behavior and mindset of various generations. So let me begin with a question, which generation are you from or belong in? Well, if you think cash is still king, you might want to crawl out of the rock you're in, as cashless and cash life are now the transactional norm. My friends, we now live in the digital revolution, and digitalization has propelled the changing economic landscape. And this is further accelerated by a growing digital savvy population. Gen Z, or Z, rules mobile, while Gen Alpha lords over the tablet. Everyone is very much connected. Let's take that now in the Philippines' perspective. At a glance, the Philippines may seem to have all the ingredients needed to push for rapid digitalization. The numbers are very clear indicators. Over 77% of the population are exposed to digital. 65% owning smartphone devices, with 69% internet and mobile social media users spending an average of 10 hours online daily. But scale in customer and customer adoption remain critical. We can currently cite four global digital trends shaping the future of money. First, cash usage is decreasing. Take China, for example. It has, a record, it has recorded a staggering mobile transaction volume of about 41.5 trillion U.S. dollars in 2018, up more than 28 times from five years ago. This hard fact is according to the People's Bank of China. In Sweden, only one in 10 people use cash. Its banknotes and coins in circulation now accounts for just 1% of their GDP. Second, smartphone ubiquity is growing. In a survey released three months ago, it says that smartphone ownership has grown with an average of 76% across 18 advanced economies. Meanwhile, there is an average of only 45% in emerging economies. With the Philippines ranking third among these developing countries, with a 65% penetration after South Africa and Brazil. Third, is the increasing disintermediation across channels that promote interoperability and seamless interconnection. And lastly, we have seen the accelerating utilization of DLT, or what we call the distributed ledger technologies, technologies which some may interchange at times with blockchain but in fact works complementary to it. In the recent spring joint meeting of the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund last April in Washington, D.C., it was reported that about 25% of central banks around the world are now actively exploring the possibility of issuing central bank digital currencies. You may have also come across the news that Facebook is raising one billion US dollars for its global digital reserve currency, or a global coin, stable coin. With over 2.37 billion FB users, more than 30% of the global population of 7.7 .7 billion could be its potential users. This is what I would call a potential digital tsunami. Digital currencies are inherently global, just like an open internet. Imagine if the IMF rolls out a digital version of special drawing rights, or SDRs, for its member countries, then this will definitely be a game changer. SDRs represent a claim to a currency held by IMF member countries for which they may be exchanged. All indicators point to an enabling landscape that will set the stage for this digital regime to happen. Even IMF Managing Director Christine Lagarde seems to embrace this disruption, as she strongly proposes for a government-backed digital currency to ensure public trust. It seems that what is Lagarde's preferred option 
is a collaboration between traditional financial power structures and DOTs. One may say that state-backed digital currencies may satisfy public goals related to financial inclusion, consumer protection, privacy, and fraud prevention. But these questions remain. Should central banks focus on pushing for appropriate infrastructures and enabling regulations to support the market? Or should it actively and directly create and offer digital currencies as another form of legal tender? According to an estimate released by the London School of Economics, there are over 30 million people worldwide already transacting using cryptocurrencies provided by various players. Hence, even central banks are indeed being disrupted by emerging technologies. JP Morgan launched its own JPM digital coins, the second dollar backed stable coin in February 2019 after Signature Bank last year. IBM also announced that six are to issue stable coins, although only three have been publicly disclosed. Locally, in the Philippines, only Union Bank and RCBC have foreign into this. What then would be the key benefits of a cash-like economy? It is obvious that going digital ensures audit trail of every transaction. Optimized efficiencies are also expected with streamlined and simplified process. More transactions need generating more data. Providing a delightful customer experience would always be the end goal of any digital initiative. And lastly, as we all often hear, technology is the best equalizer, especially in driving financial inclusivity. In fact, the FinTech Alliance, which is composed of more than a third of registered FinTech companies, now corner more than 85% of FinTech-initiated transactions in the country today exerting our efforts to reach and cater to the financial access division segment. That's actually a term we use to refer to the unbanked or underserved Filipinos. But we recognize that it takes a concerted effort of different sectors to really create the way and impact we want to achieve. Collaboration and synergy are critical to the success of this objective. This challenge is too enormous too important for any single player to take on their own. Let's put all our hands on deck. The more united we are, the swifter we create a digital economy that uplifts the lives of every Filipino. In creating the desired social impact, we must first have to understand the coping mechanism of Filipinos in addressing their financial concerns. Filipinos, whether through social economic trials creatively, to be discarded, kumaparahan. Their journey should be emotion evoking, experience enhancing, life changing, from unbanked to semi banked to fully banked. There is a need to create an enabling industry wide regulatory sandbox framework for various digital financial services to further allow digital innovations to thrive, as well as a shared KYC registry that will cover the unbanked or the financial access division segment across the country. As one of our contributions to the industry, we help new and existing key players alike in this quest. We have launched the book Uncharted Beyond, the taxonomy of fintech in the Philippines, to serve as a handbook to help navigate the twists and turns of this digital jungle we're in. In the same way, scientists have developed a hard-working nomenclature to make a better sense of our world. It also showcases a compendium of a speculative, speculative case studies, which we hope you can glean from. And to make the call for exclusive growth and digital shift more viral, viral we have recently launched the Nestor Escalita Jr. Institute for Growth Towards National Inclusion, Transformation and Empowerment, or IGNITE. If we use the infinity stones, Avenger fans. To an analogize the imperatives in driving an inclusive digital economy, then we have the first stone, time. 
the reality, uh, sorry, the reality is told to symbolize that there is a need for it. Time, it has to be inevitable. Space, it has to be borderless and ubiquitous. Power, it has to be equalizing and enabling. Mind, means acceptability and it has to be trusted. And soul, it has to be uplifting. It has to be, it has to uplift Filipinos nationwide. In the words of the Avengers, as they poise themselves to battle Thanos and his minions, Avengers assemble, and assemble we must. We need to put our acts, our power, influence, and resources together to make it all happen. Thank you, Indira.